I, uh, I don't think I'm getting through the whole lesson today. I'm probably going to split it into two parts. We're going to be talking about free fall. But first, last day we talked about G's. In 1977 in Northamshire, England, David Purley's race car crashed and his speed dropped from 174 kilometers per hour in 0.66 meters to zero. He had 29 fractures. He had three dislocations. His heart stopped six times, but he did survive. That's the person who has survived the largest G's where we actually had the video data and could analyze it on record. Maybe someone has survived more in a car accident that wasn't videotaped because we didn't have the data, but this is it. Jada, what does this question want me to find? So what am I going to find first if I want to find G's? Yeah. So I'm going to write this. I'm going to go... Is the screen unfro... Oh, geez, do it. Unfreeze the screen. That's better. I'm going to write G's equals question mark, but really I'm going to find A. And Jada, there's one number kind of creeping me out here. Do you see it? Hundred and seventy four what? We don't do physics with kilometers per hour. So uh I'm gonna first of all, that hundred and seventy four, is that VI or VF? Yeah. That's the initial what's VF in any car accident ever? Okay, so I'll make a little note. Look, I know VF is zero. VI, uh, how do I convert that 174 to a meter? Yeah. 40, and I think it's 48.333 probably. Yeah. So I'll store that on my calculator. I'll write 48.3, but if I need to, I'll use my answer button. And I'll probably cross that out and lightly above it or below it, I'll write 48.3 meters per second. Jada, what else do I know? I need three things to find the fourth. So they must have told me. Time? I disagree. How do you know? This is why I've told you it, it is worth memorizing what units go with what because it really cuts down on your thinking. Right? Oh, meters, distance. Technically a displacement, but whatever. So just to put that in perspective for you, he went from 174 kilometers per hour to zero in about, that's about 0.66 meters, okay? Let's find out. I'm looking for an equation that's got an A, a VF, and a VI, and a D in it. There probably is one. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Don't write it down. Instead, can you look at it? Can you get the A by itself, Jada? I'll give you a hint. A equals... Yep. 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 Well done. If you're at that stage where you, Riley, feel comfortable going straight to the rewritten equation without writing down the original from your green sheet, knock yourself out. Go ahead. Let's plug in the numbers. So it's going to be 0 squared minus, I'm going to write 48.3, but you know I'm using my answer button. Oh, don't forget the squared, Mr. Duick. I'll divide it by 2 times 0.66. I need to get that 48.3 on my calculator. So that was 174 divided by 3.6. Josh, that's what you did, right? Yep. So bracket 0 squared minus, haha, answer button squared, close bracket, divided by 2 times 0.66. So this is the acceleration in meters per second squared. It's pretty big. Why is it negative? Mm -hmm. Slowing down. Uh, I'm going to write negative 1,770. And then, Jada, how do I convert acceleration into Gs? I'm going to divide my answer button by 9.8. Biggest on record, this person survived 180.6 Gs. Now, this person almost certainly would have been wearing padding and a helmet because there is a, this is a race car driver. Almost certainly would have been in pretty good restraint. So there's a whole bunch of other factors here that may have contributed to this. Also, I should point out, Riley, probably that Gs was not consistent because in a crash, 
acceleration isn't constant as your metal is crumpling sometimes the metal crumples easier sometimes it crumples less easy we're finding an average acceleration and then we're finding an average g's because we don't have calculus i'm right so negative 180.6 or the equivalent of having 179.6 of him dogpile on himself. Try and imagine that stack of people going up and, yeah, very lucky to be alive. By the way, you don't need to memorize that 10 Gs is around when bones break and 25 Gs is around fatal. You do need to know that 1 G is 9.8. Oh, do you need to memorize it? No, it's on your sheet. You do need to memorize that to convert acceleration to Gs, you're going to divide by 9.8. Let's talk about free fall. When an object is falling through the air, we say it is in free fall. In free fall, if we ignore air resistance, the acceleration is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Why negative? For free fall Casey, we're going to let down be negative and up be... Yeah. That way, that, that'll be our directional frame. That makes sense. Oh, I should point out other places like the moon, or as you get further from the Earth, that number changes. So as you get further and further from the Earth, gravity gets weaker and weaker and weaker. We look at that in physics 12 if you're interested in that. Uh, on the moon, G is about 1.6. We saw a video yesterday of them dropping a hammer and a feather on the moon, and you noticed, huh, that fell a little slower than my eyes are used to. It looked a little weird. Oh, base jumping. Put your pencil down and look up. Example 2. I like example 2. I like example 2. I like example 2. Example 2 is a nice question. In fact, there's a good chance I like every question in this lesson because, Alex, I'm nuts about free fall because I've experienced it. Example two, read along with me, it says it's a cannonball. Why a cannonball? I'm really emphasizing we're going to ignore air resistance. Diego, we're not dropping a feather off of a cliff because that would totally change the numbers here. So we'll drop bowling balls and cannonballs and rocks and things that are pretty aerodynamic and won't be affected by air resistance too much, at least for the first while. A cannonball is dropped from the cliff. I'd like everybody to underline the word dropped. This is another word you're going to add to your physics vocabulary. So we already have added at rest. We already have added come to a stop, and we added constant speed or constant velocity. Hits the ground 10.6 seconds later. Declan, what does A want me to find? Of the five physics things that we've learned, time, di, I'm going to be fussy. We're actually going to end up with a displacement this time, and you'll see why. what I mean in the answer. So I'm going to make a little note. Yeah, this is asking us to find D equals question mark. And then I wrote here, dropped means that we know that vi equals, if you drop something, what is the initial velocity right there? So if you ever see the word dropped, that's a trigger word, you can right away then say vi equals zero. And let's put that there in our notes too. In other words, for those base jumpers that you saw, what was vi for them? Zero. Okay. Declan, what's that 10.6? Yep. How many things do I know? I need three to find the fourth. What else do I know? Are we in free fall? Say yes. Then I know the acceleration. What? Uh, negative Now I'm looking for an equation that's got a D, a VI, a T, and an A in it. There is one. Declan, which equation? Uh, that's okay. Declan said D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Now he's correct, but he also wasted my time. I'm not going to make you do this, but I want you to start your keep, your keep your eyes open anytime something is a zero. What's zero in this question, Declan? Uh, yeah. 
So although you read to me D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, and I would totally give you full credit and I would give you marks for that, what I would have written is this, D equals a half AT squared, although I would have written D equals AT squared over 2. Arian, what happened to the 1 in front of the 1 half? Well, it's right there, but is timesing by 1 going to make a difference at all? Then I'm lazy enough, you can't make me write it. And I'm lazy enough that if I don't need to write the VIT, well, well why would I? You, you can. And again, let me emphasize, I will never take marks off if you write the full equation. What I am going to start to say to you is keep your eyes open for zeros. Uh, what am I trying to get by itself, Declan? Oh, bonus. There already is. What's A? Don't forget the squared, most common mistake. Oh, look. Why did I put, oh, sorry, yeah, divided by 2, not over 9.8, divided by 2. There's the 1 half, right, dividing by 2. So get your calculators out, all of you. There's a good chance I know which of you aren't following along on your calculator, and I'll probably call on you, so be prepared. Good, my friend got the message there. You're going to notice something a little weird about your answer. What do you notice about your answer? Why do you get a negative? Because physics, this is a vector equation. It's giving us a displacement. Did the bowling ball end up above or below from where it started? How would the universe show below negative? So instead of getting worried, I actually kind of relax and say, yeah, it did end up below from where I started. Did you all get negative 500 and, I guess, ooh, negative 550 or negative 551? I think with the 5 there, the 0 would bump up, right? If I go to 3 sig figs, negative 551 meters. Now, it sounds a bit weird to say a cliff is, I'll ask your question in a second, negative 551 meters high. So later on this year, you'll learn the word height is technically a scalar. And so if you told me the cliff was 551 meters high, I'll give you full marks. So if you want to, You can write that, H for height. I'd take either answer on a test, and I'd give you full credit. Okay? Question. Calculator glitch? Okay, let me pause the video. What else could I ask from this information if I told you how long it took to hit the ground? I could get the impact velocity. By the way, have any of you ever stood on a high cliff and carefully, without making, making sure there's nobody down below, carefully tossed rocks over a cliff? So if you're at a situation, like this is some of the things you can find. If you use your, your smartphone stopwatch, time how long it takes for the rock to hit the ground, you can calculate how high the cliff is. I think it adds to the experience. And you can calculate the impact velocity. What's this question asking me to find? I know it says impact velocity, but in terms of our five physics concepts from our four equations, what's it asking me to find? Which velocity? VF. Isn't VF zero? No. That's after you hit the ground. V final when you hit the ground is not zero. And you know how I know? If you stand on your table and if you do a belly flop onto the cement, it will hurt. If VF was zero when you hit the ground, it wouldn't hurt. It will. This is going to be one of my big peeves. I guarantee there's someone in here who's going to start to say, wasn't VF zero when I hit the ground? No, after you hit the ground, v, that's not VF. That's a whole new situation. So this is asking me to find VF. Is VI still zero in this situation? Yeah. Is T still 10.6? Yeah. Is A still negative 9.8? Yeah, I could use D, but let's try and avoid it because, Ella, if I got D wrong, I'm going to get VF wrong. Ella, I'm looking for an equation that's got a VF, a VI, a T, and an A in it. There is one. Oh, you wasted my time. What's VI? So, by the way, again, full credit, but I would have written in this special case... VF is just AT. Ella, what's A? T is 10.6, no squared this time. 
Oh, what's the negative answer telling me here? It's a velocity. Which way is this bowling ball tra or this cannonball traveling when it hits the ground? That negative doesn't freak me out. It relaxes me. Yes, I'm traveling down. Thank you very much. I'd be more concerned if I got a positive answer. Did you get negative 103.8? I'm going to call it negative 104 meters per second. I, I should point out we're ignoring air resistance. And a cannonball won't have much, but this cliff is high enough that air resistance in real life would actually skew these numbers. So these numbers aren't quite accurate, but we're going to ignore air resistance. So there. Was there a question I heard over here? No? Next page. Ooh. Casey, what's C asking me to find? What's the velocity of the cannonball? <laughs> Definitely asking me to find the velocity. Initial or final? Uh, final? Yeah. You know how... After, that's kind of a later word. Okay, so this is why I said to you, you can figure out whether it's asking you to find a VI or VF. Read the chronological flow, the time flow of the question. So I totally agree with you, Casey. VF equals question mark. What's that 3.6? What are the units next to that 3.6? So? Yes, there. I heard it click. Oh. Oh, that'd be t almost like that. That I like. I like. I like. We're in free fall. I know A. What's the acceleration in free fall? Yep. That was negative. Yes. All right. That's two things. I need three things. Let's go back to the original situation. Can I use the T equals 10 point? No, no, no. I can't. Because time is... Oh, is VI still zero? Did we still drop it? Then I can use that here. Do I know three things? I can find the fourth. In fact, now I could also find the displacement D if I needed to as well. Anyways, I'm looking for an equation that's got a VF, a VI, an A, and a T in it. There is one. Which one, Casey? Ah, I knew I could count on you to be lazy. I picked the right person. Yes. Technically VI plus AT, but what's VI? So. Good. It's going to be. And you'll notice I'm putting the vector symbols in a bit more now to remind myself, pay attention to negatives and positives because here they're really, they're going to tell me on the way up or on the way down, right? Oh, Casey, how fast was it traveling when it hit the ground? Previous answer. Uh, it was negative 100 104 meters. Okay. That was after 10.6 seconds. After 3.6 seconds, will it be going faster or slower? Based on what you know of how objects fall. Yeah. Slow. I'm expecting an answer in magnitude smaller than 104. It'll be negative, which means technically it's a larger answer because negative numbers that are smaller are big. Anyways, but I'm expecting in magnitude something smaller than 104. I've got a bit of it, an error check here, is my point. If I make a typo, I might catch it if I'm paying attention. Negative 9.8 times 3.6. Y'all get uh, negative 35.3? Yeah, yeah. Meters per second. Casey, what's the negative telling me? Which way is the cannonball traveling? Down. Mr. Duick, would it ever be traveling up? Look up, look up, look up. Sometimes. Oh, that's hands, Mr. Duick. It's still went down. On, but on the way up, if I had calculated the velocity in the first half of that trip there, I would be getting positive answer. We'll look at one like that in a bit. Yeah, quick look at money. Sure, 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 sure. Kalish, what's D asking me to find? How far? Which of my five physics concepts is how far? That's not a sign-out sheet, kiddo. Just go. That's my flex sheet. I remember these. Yeah. And we're going to get, it's going to be a displacement. And I'll bet you, because we're below from where we started after 3.6 seconds, I think we're going to get a negative answer. So... 
Kalish, I'm definitely going to write D equals question mark. After what? How many seconds? How many seconds was it in part C? You have the notes in front of you. You have to look, and I've scrolled down on purpose. You have to actually look and follow along. You're also 3.6. Then I'm not going to bother relisting my data since it right there. Now, if this had been 3.5 or 3.1, I'd relist whatever I still could use, and I would chuck out whatever I couldn't use. But here, since it's back-to-back -back questions, same timestamp, I'm going to say I'm looking for an equation that has a D, a T, an A, and a VI in it. Which one? Yeah. Uh, How come you didn't bother reading the VIT? Because Dropped. It won't always be. By the way, later on, we'll throw stuff from a cliff. We'll throw it up, then it'll be a positive VI, or we'll throw it down, it'll be a negative VI, but we, we can handle it. It just means a bit more typing. Uh, it's going to be negative 9.8 times 3.6. Don't forget the squared. That'll be your line for a bit. All over 2. Negative 9.8 times 3.6. Don't forget the squared divided by 2. I got negative 63.5 and uh, meters. Before we move to the next page or the next question, I could also have found D, don't write this down, by using VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A. Now that's using my answer from part C. But this might be a way for me to check my answer from part C, where I would go VF was negative uh, 35.3 squared minus 0 squared divided by bracket 2 times negative 9.8. And I didn't get the negative answer. This one tends to give you a distance, not a displacement. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Um, but same magnitude, I'm pretty sure I got these right. Okay. Example three. Ball is thrown straight up with a velocity of 29 meters per second. Ooh. Huh. Hmm. Sarah, what's A asking me to find? Good. How did you know time and not distance? It's tough for me to explain, except you've read a lot of English sentences, and this how long clearly refers to time. So, well, Sarah, what's that 29? Which one? Is that what the ball starts out at, or is that the, what the ball ends up at? I think it's what the ball starts at, okay? What's A? I know this. Yep. That's only two things. I need three things to find the fourth. Riley has an idea. What, Riley? Riley gets a candy. Did you hear what he realized? Watch, 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 watch. Sarah, at the top for a split second, it came to a stop, which means for a split second, VF was zero. I owe you a candy. Don't let me forget. That only works at the very, very top. So when is VF zero? Not at the bottom when you're hitting the ground. Don't believe me? Do a belly flop onto the cement. It will hurt. VF is zero. Look, 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 look. At the top for a split second there. Now, this is a bit weird. What's happening? It's leaving my hand. It's on the way up. So VI is positive. Which way is the acceleration? Negative. So on the way up, it's slowing down. It's accelerating this, slowing down. 
it eventually comes to a stop. Then it starts to speed up because now the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative. They're both in the same direction. You'll start to speed up. That's how a projectile works. Anyways, Sarah, what equation? Can you get the T by itself, please? Yeah. Now, you could have, because VF is zero, you could have kind of skipped it, except because it's by itself in the original equation, I don't usually cross that out, because then I've lost a whole half of the equation. So I'm a little inconsistent with my, when do I not bother writing zeros and when don't I? Here I would leave it in. It's going to be zero minus 29 all over negative 9.8. Uh oh am I going to get a negative answer? I can't get a negative answer. Time has to be positive. I better get... Did I get a positive answer or a negative? Oh, you mean the universe took care of me as long as I entered the correct data? Oh, I like that. 0 minus 29 divided by negative 9.8. I got 2.96 seconds. Is that right? So that's something we can do. What else, if I launch something instead of dropping it, can I ask? Or can we figure out? I like B, I like B, I like B. B is a nice question. As is A. Ooh. Huh. Lily, what's B asking me to find? What's B asking me to find? Yeah. In terms of my five physics concepts, BF, what's it asking me to find? Yeah. Click like a bunny. Here, I thought you had an answer. That's a, I think it's asking me height displacement. I'm going to get a displacement. I'm going to find D. Okay. You've all turned the page, I think. I'm going to scroll back digitally. Is VI still 29? I think I can say that. Is A still negative 9.8? Yes, I can say that. Maximum height, Lily, are we still at the top? Then I can say VF is still zero. I could use this time value here, but if I got this wrong, I'll get this wrong. Lily, I'm looking, I know you were away, but that's okay, we can do this. I'm looking for an equation that's got a D, a VI, an A, and a VF in it. There is one. Which one? Yep. Equals VI squared plus 2AD. If you want to write that down, you can't. Let's see if we can get the D by itself. How is that going to work? Um, the VF squared is going to drop down like a domino. Then I'll do my adding and subtracting. Minus VI squared. And then my div dividing by 2A. That'll work. So it's going to be 0 squared <coughs> minus 29 squared all over 2 times negative 9.8. Lily, maximum height, are we above or below from where we started? Am I expecting a positive displacement or a negative displacement? Should get a positive. Bracket, 0 squared minus 29 squared, close bracket, divided by bracket 2 times negative 9.8, close, whoop, typo, Mr. Duke. You get 42.9 and meters. Lily, before we go to the next question, suppose this was a test and I had some extra time to kill. I could also go D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Using my answer from part A, I could go D equals VI 29 times, what was the answer from part A, folks? 
nine six. Yeah. Plus point five times negative nine point eight times two point nine six squared. I've rounded off a tiny bit, but I should be really, really close to that 42.90. In fact, look at that. I'm good to seven sig figs, I match it. So again, this is one of those tests. Before you hand it in, Alex, you probably got more than one way that you can check a part B or a part C answer. You got more than one way you can find it. Go ahead. Check your answer. C. What's the impact velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, it all depends. So Arian had a nice idea. He said, Mr. Duick, I could start my stopwatch at the top, then VI would be zero, and I'll figure out how fast it hits the ground. Or I could start my stopwatch on the ground, then VI would be 29. What the heck is VF? It, are we on a cliff in this question, or did we start on the ground in this question? Let me go back and look at the original question. I don't see that we're on a cliff here, unlike in part in, in example two, where I said the word cliff. So I'm going to assume we're starting on the ground and ending on the ground. If you're starting on the ground and ending on the ground, we have a saying, and the saying goes like this. Finish the word. Can't type. You should know the answer without having to do any math. Don't say zero, because then you could do a belly flop onto the cement and it wouldn't hurt. Does anybody see it? Yeah. Declan, Declan, candy for you. Because what was that? Negative 29. Normally someone says 29, Mr. Do It. You hit the ground at the same speed. We're talking velocity. Negative 29 meters per second. I can use that as a shortcut if we start on the ground and end on the ground. If you start and end at the same height, what goes up must come down you'll zip by, if we're doing air resistance, which we are, at the same velocity that you left, but negative, but downwards. Okay. D. D. For how long is the ball in the air? What's this question asking me to find? Time. Okay, well, <coughs> what was that? Okay, there's two ways to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a line down the middle of the page. Casey's method, Casey said, well, look, Mr. Duke, if it takes 2.96 seconds to get to the top, won't it also take 2.96 seconds to get back to where it starts? So Casey is saying one way, I'm going to go time total is time top times two. I think that's the shortest I can write that and get that across. And I would do it this way in this question because I know time to top. It's sitting there. So I would go 2.96 times two and I would say, ha ha, it's 5.92 seconds. What if I didn't know the time to top? What if I hadn't asked you part A, I just asked you part D? Then I would go like this. Let 
VI is 29. Declan, what's VF? A is still negative 9.8. And I would say, hey, I'm looking for an equation that's got a T, a VI, a VF, and an A in it. There is one. It's VF equals VI plus AT, the first one. And then I would get the T by itself. Declan, can you get the T by itself in VF equals VI plus AT? It's on your sheet. The first one, get the T by itself. If I type in bracket negative 29 minus 29 divided by negative 9.8, it would be really cool if that was also 5.92 seconds. And it is. Of course, this value was a rounded off value, the 2.96. It wasn't exactly 2.96. But I can, I can get it in two ways. Or again, Diego, I can check my answer by finding it in a different method. Hey, I'm getting the same answer, both methods. I probably right unless I made somehow the same weird typo twice so one question I might give you we'll throw something in the air and I'll just ask you to find the total time of flight and that's what we call this the flight time the total time of flight e what's the displacement of the ball once it hits the ground yep Casey, what? On a roll. Because displacement is change in position. Uh, the distance would be 42.9 times 2 on the way up, on the way down. But the displacement, nothing. Nothing. Good. Let's keep going. What else can I do? Well... I dropped something from a cliff. I threw something up from the ground. Let's throw something up from a cliff. Let's combine them. A ball is thrown straight up from a cliff at 12.5 meters per second. Hits the ground at the base of the cliff after 8.85 seconds. Huh. Huh. Well, Diego, what's A asking me to find? Figured out where we are? You looked like you were kind of turning. What's A asking me to find? Which of my five physics concepts is how high? Yeah. Technically, again, a displacement. I'll put the vector symbol because I'll bet you... Well, Diego, are we ending up above or below from where we started? I'm going to get a negative displacement here if I do this right. Okay. What's that 12.5, kiddo? What are the units next to that 12.5? So it's a velocity, initial or final. Yep. What's that 8.85? Yep. I need, I have two things. I need three things. There must, oh. Don't be telling me VF equals zero or I'm going to have you do a belly flop onto the cement and tell me it doesn't hurt. We're in free fall. Riley. A equals yes. I'll never tell you that. Not if you're in free fall. I'll expect you to clue in. Hey, Diego, I'm looking for an equation that's got a D, a V, I, a T, and an is one. It absolutely would be. And there's no zeros, so none of them cancel. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Diego, what do we need to get by itself? Ah! <laughs> Bonus. So plug and chug. Here we go. D is going to be VI 12.5. T 8.85. Plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 12.5. Don't forget the squared. Oh, sorry. Don't forget the... Okay. 
Again, if you've got a good calculator, you should be able to type this in in one line. Yeah. Twelve point five. That's the VI, right? Oh. That's not right. Candy for you. It's eight point eight five squared. I'm sorry. I'm giving out a lot of candies today. What's nice about this equation, Diego, is it takes into account the ball went up, the ball came down, it works all that in. It's going to give you the displacement, which is just where'd you start? Top of the cliff? Where'd you end up? Bottom of the cliff? It doesn't care about how high you went above the cliff because you lost that when you came back down. The equation took care of all that. Did you get negative 273? Check your typing. You got the same calculator as me. See if you have the same number. I made a typo. I put in the wrong time initially. You fixed that because I was I messed up. Negative 273 meters. Or if you reported it as a height, positive 273 meters. But I'm not that fussy. Okay. Got it okay this time, kiddo? Should we zigged? Yeah? Got it? Good. B. What's the maximum height of the ball? Didn't we just didn't we just find that or did we? Well, we have to imagine what's going on here. What we're doing is we're throwing the ball into the air and then it's coming down. We've just found this height. Can I, well, is 12.5 meters a height? Is it meters? No, it's meters per sec. I can't, you know what I'm going to have to do though? I'm going to have to figure that out. And then I'll add it to the cliff. That'll be the maximum height. So I am finding a D equals, but this time it's the one above me. Is VI still 12.5? Yes. Is time still 8.85 seconds? Am I at the top after 8.85 seconds? No, can't use that. Oh, A is still negative 9.8. I need something. Oh, Riley, what do I know at the very top for a split second? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Riley, which equation? Can you get the D by itself, please? Sorry. Can you get the D by itself, please? It'll be VF squared. You got the right equation, but now keep rewrite it. Squared yep. Squared yes. Divided by two. Don't you get a little nerdy adrenaline rush? Mommy, mommy, look what I can do in my head. So it's going to be zero squared. Take away 12.5. Don't forget the... Divided by 2 times negative 9.8. This is a fraction. I think brackets around the top and brackets around the bottom, unless you got that fancy schmancy fraction button. I get 7.97 meters. But Casey pointed out, Mr. Duick, that's not the answer. That's just that. The total height is that. So what am I going to do with this 7.97? 
plus 273. Not negative, positive now, because now we're measuring from the ground up, not from the cliff down. And I get 281, almost bang on. Now, it's usually, Alex, right around here where I pause for a second and I say, this is going to sound weird, but I hope I haven't taught you anything new so far, aside from the fact that uh, you're accelerating at negative 9.8 down. I hope everything else is, we're just using the kinematics equations at, like we practiced. Oh, yeah, of course, VI is zero when you drop it. Oh, of course, if you're below from where you started, it's negative because it's a displacement. Riley's trying to do some math looking at the clock. It's in binary. C. Yeah. Let me pause for a second. We're going to finish with C. We're going to press pause. I'm going to give you a couple of questions that you can try from the homework to get a head start. We're not going to completely finish the lesson, okay? Um, no, you know what? I'm going to pause here, and what I'm going to hand out for homework... Oh, my God. I'm going to give you a take-home quiz.